Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer. If you Google for Great Canadian Gambler, I come up. If you remember the poker room at the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City in the movie Rounders, I was the professor in that poker room. And if you go to my website, John Termel, T U R M E L dot com slash Taj Professor dot HTM, you'll find an index of all the videos of the poker power tools I've engineered to help me play. I was the teaching assistant of Canada's only mathematics of gambling course from 1974 until 1978. And I've invented and published many poker power tools that helped me play. But I was putting together some new ones and decided to, you know, create a complete toolkit. And I've come up with an extremely simple way of helping people convert from fractions and to decimals and odds and back. And actually it's so simple that I uh, moved it up to par chapter one of the new book I'm gonna put out with all of my new poker power tools, over 30 by now. Little tricks to help you know numbers like the odds of the flush, the odds of this, the odds of being, having a bigger pair, all sorts of neat little things. But this interesting one is the fractoring of unity. And this is what this video is about. I did a speech at the Brantford Inventors Club explaining, you know, how this it can now help most people figure out odds and decimals and fractions like never before. So I hope it's something new that helps you in your gambling and in your math because it's really incredibly simple. I'm finishing up a poker book. I'm publishing all of the little tricks I've invented to help me come up with odds and numbers and answers, like 32 different little poker power tools. I had only published nine of them before, and there's 24 new ones with a whole bunch of them just invented in the last couple of weeks. Now, I want to tell you about something that's really neat that I was in shock at figuring this out. We might even call it the magic of one. Okay, now, i got to come up with a new expression, and that will be a fractor. Okay, keep that in mind. Fraction of something. Now, I could say, how many dimes in a dollar? Well, everybody knows there are ten, ten senses in a dollar. How many quarters in a dollar? Well, everybody knows that there are four 25 cents in a dollar. How many half dollars in a dollar? Well, everybody knows there's two 50 cents in a dollar. So all those numbers that multiply together that come to 100% are fractors. They're connected together forever. An example, 9 and 11. 9 times 11 is 99, pretty close to 100. So, if you invert 1 over 0.9, you get 11. So any kind of a percentage which is inverted gives you the fractor. The other number which multiplied by it gives you 100%. Okay, that's pretty simple. So the basic ones are 100 pennies in a dollar, so fractors are 1 in 100, 100 in 1. 2, 50, 50 or 2. 4, 25, 25 or 4. 5, 20, 20 or 5. 50, 2, 2 or 50. Now most people know thirds, 33 thirds. Or they'll know there's 3 30 thirds, okay? But the ones they don't know, there's only four of them. And I'm going to teach them to you now. 9 times 11 is 100. 11 times 9 is 100. Memorize that one because most people don't remember it. 8 times 12 and a half is 100. And 12 times 8, 96, close to 100. So 8 and 12, memorize those. They're connected forever. So 9, 11, 8, 12. 7, well how many 7 cents are there in a dollar? 14. And how many 14 cents is in a dollar? 7. So 7 and 14 are connected. And the last one that almost nobody knows, how many 6 cents is in a dollar? There's 17 of them. 
And how many 17 cents is in a dollar? There's six of them. So all you have to do is remember the last four fractor pairs that you never memorized before. Six with 17. 17 with six. They're always connected. Um, seven with 14. 14 with seven. Always connected. Eight dozen, a dozen eights. Always connected. And nine, 11, 11 ninths. Always connected. Just like five and 20, four and 25, three and 33, two and 50, and one and 100. With those, you can figure out all odds. You can convert all fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions. Let me give you an example. You got 10 dimes in a dollar. You got 100 pennies in a dollar. You got a thousand tenths of a penny in a dollar. Point one. And you got 10,000 hundredths of a penny. Point oh one. And you got a hundred thousand thousandths of a penny. Point oh oh one. So the same fractors apply, and you just got to move the zeros around, the decimal point. So I could say something like, what's the fraction if you're going to win 0.00005% of the time. Well, I move the decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 until I get 5. I know that fractor. It's 20. So 20, and now add 5 zeros. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0005 multiplied by 20 and five zeros, $200,000, oh, two million, you get 100%. So, once you know your fractors, 617, 414, I can say, okay, the percentage is 0 0.0014. What's the fraction, what are the odds? Well, you move it one, two, three, four, over to 14, and then you know that the fractor of 14 is seven, and add four zeros, 70,001. Wow, as simple as that. Once you know your 10 fractors, there's only 19 numbers, two and five, three and 33, four and 25, five and 20, six and 17, seven and 14, eight and 12, nine and 11, and 10 and 10, that's it. You can now convert all fractions into percent, into fra and all fractions into decimals, and decimals back into fractions with that simple function. Isn't that beautiful? Once you know your fractors. Let's pick a weird number, okay? 38%, 0 .00038. Well, let's move it five decimal places. Well, let's move it to four decimal places. 3.8, that's pretty close to four, right? So, 25 with four more zeros. Boom! Those are the odds. One in 250,000. It's as simple as that to be able to convert fractions to decimal once you know your 10 fractors. Neat, eh? Now, the neatest part of all, what happens if you got a big number? Little ones like 0 .003, those are easy. You know, 3 and 4 and 5 all the way up to 10. What happens, what are the odds if you're going to win? Let's say you're going to win 99.997% of the time. What odds should you give him? Well, what's interesting is the odds you should give him are the odds he should be receiving. So instead of trying to figure out the massive odds you should give him, work out his little percentage, figure out what he should get, and then reverse it, and that's what you gotta give him. So, example, 99.997%. Now, let's subtract that from one. You got 0.003%. Now, move the decimal over three to three. Three zeros gone. The fractor of three is 33. Add three zeros, 33,001. Bam! As simple as that. So, you can either you can either do the fractor with a number that you can get to easily enough, 
which is convenient, like 3.8 was near 4. But if it's a weird one, like in the high, 8.0086. Gee, what's that? Well, that's subtracted from 1, the you know, 0.9986. Well, it's 0 0.0014. Move the decimal four spots, so you got 14. The fractor's 7, add 4 zero. 70,001. 1 in 70,000. Bam! Once you know your 10 fractors, you have complete command over all decimal places and all fractions and all odds. Now, that basically is something that I've lived gambling all my life. And it was only when I started working it out and doing the spreadsheets that it popped out at me. Wow! I mean, I've always worked these out in my brain. Engineers know that 6% is 16.6, .6, and we know these ones, but without having it drilled into our brains that there were just four, we didn't know. Everybody knows the first six out of ten. One, two, three, four, five, and ten. It's only nine, eight, seven, and six that are hard. And they've only got two digits each to remember. Six with 17, seven with 14, eight with 12, 9 with 11. And with those things, and knowing how to move your decimal point, if you move it over here, and you gotta move it over there, and you can now take any weird number they ever throw at you. If you can get to it, if it's a conveniently close to your fractor number, one of a pair, great. And if not, try subtracting and see if that's an easier number to do it. But either way, if you do it directly, those are the odds you get. And if you're inverse it, do it for him, those are the odds you give. And that's as simple as that, to be able to convert fractions to decimals for the rest of your life, now that you know your fractors. So what's a fractor for nine? Fractor for seven. Fractor for eight. Six. Eleven. Nine. Twelve. Eight. All right, you know your fractors. <laughs> now you can do all that stuff I described. Okay. And isn't that a, that's so wildly new to me that I went and put it chapter one of my new book. Imagine that, I moved it right to the front and the other stuff goes to the back. The other new stuff too. So, new word, a fractor. It's simply the inverse of one of the probabilities, the inverse of a percent. And it always comes out to another number, which is the number of coins in the dollar. You got your size and you got your number, and they always are related. So, also, four, notice two is for 50 and 20 is for five. And it also goes down with all the zeros. It's in, one is a wonderful number. So anyway, that's fractors. Now you know the first time this was ever explained, I hope, in history. Yeah.